Now let's examine key quotations relating to the character of Judge Danforth. Now, according to the play, he is the deputy governor of Massachusetts, a man who's in his 60s, who's very much concerned with political office and furthering his power in political office. And therefore, he looks to the Salem witch trials as a really key way to gain more notoriety in order to further his political interests. Now, contextually, we could arguably say that Judge Danforth represents perhaps Senator McCarthy in the 1950s America. McCarthy being, even if he was never officially a member of the HUAC House of Un-American Committee on uh, Un-American Activities, even if he was never officially a member, he played a key role in the communist witch hunts and he did so as a way of furthering his own political agenda and his own political interests. So you can draw some similarities with the two characters. And really, Judge Danforth seems to be the antagonist of this story. To some degree, you can also say Reverend Paris is the antagonist, but really, Judge Danforth appears to be the real main antagonist, the person who is far more focused on really following very crystal clear black and white rules, very hard and harsh puritanical rules, and he symbolizes the worst excesses of the witchcraft, witch hunts, which occurred where a lot of people, very innocent people, lost their lives during this period in the 1600s in America. Now, in terms of the key quotations which illustrate his antagonistic nature and the idea that he does this more for political gain and he's very much focused, it's a very self-centered focus. He doesn't really care, again, about ridding the village of witches and ridding the village of devils. He's more concerned with raising his profile. This is illustrated in this first quotation when he asks, do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? And he's asking this to uh, Mr. Nurse. Now, here, the word level analysis you want to do is a pronoun you versus I. And of course, what these pronouns are illustrating, especially with the first person pronoun I, is showing just how Judge Danforth sees himself as above everybody else. He really sees this as more of a power play and status for him. And he doesn't really care about really maintaining order and removing and ridding Salem of, you know, devils. It's more about him asserting his power and authority through his position and especially through his notoriety in Salem, okay? The second quotation to remember when it comes to Judge Danforth's character is when he actually even shows off that he's played such a big role in condemning so many people elsewhere to death because of being accused of witches. And he states, 72 condemned to hang by that signature, that signature being his signature. He's signed off all of these deaths and he's showing off. And this showing off is shown by the adjective 72, which describes the number of people he's sentenced, he's had sentenced to death. And of course, the other word level analysis you want to do here is the verb condemned. Again, this idea that he feels almost he's, he's, he's playing the role of God. He's the one that has the power to give life or death to different people. And of course, what this is showing is just how the sheer hypocrisy of his work. He's more focused on just making sure that he stamps his this sense of fear into people as opposed to checking whether these people actually committed any acts of wrongdoing. The third quotation to remember for his character is when he states... The pure of heart need no lawyers. This is when especially Reverend Hill starts raising questions as to why people are being summarily executed, why people are being dragged out of their homes without any lawyers to defend them. And he says, well, the pure of heart need no lawyers. And of course, this is illustrating just how arrogant he is. But also there's some uh, hypocrisy there. There's some irony because actually he doesn't have a pure heart himself. He's not here out of just pure intentions, out of just wanting to rid the town of evil he also has a dark heart because he's there in order to further his own selfish political agenda now the word level analysis you want to do here is the adjective pure which is part of the irony and obviously showing judge danforth's hypocrisy and of course alliteration of need no now the other quotation that he states is when he says witchcraft is ellipsis an invisible crime is it not and this is a rhetorical question so that's the first thing you want to say in terms of a structure point and you also want to focus on the adjective invisible, okay? Now here, what this adjective illustrates is how 
being accused of being a witchcraft is almost like a death sentence. It's an invisible crime and therefore if it's invisible that therefore means it's very hard to prove your innocence if you're being accused of something that nobody else can see. Now of course this is also contextually tying into the common, the anti-communist fervour that happened in 1950s America. This idea of being uh, guilty and less proven innocent. This idea that being told that you're a communist and it's this notion of being uh, a communist sympathizer it was a very tenuous term but a term that actually changed a lot of people's lives people lost jobs people lost their status people lost opportunities incomes for something that was very tenuous and very hard to prove it was an invisible crime and one that was actually not illegal of course witchcraft during uh, the 1600s was legally seen um, as something illegal however it was still an invisible crime and this adjective is showing how hard it is therefore for somebody to prove their innocence it's basically a death sentence if someone calls you which the other quotation to highlight is when he states I should hang 10,000 that dead and again uh, Judge Danforth loves talking in um, really hyperbolic language he's talking about people who dared to rise against the law so he states I should hang 10,000 that dared to rise against the law and again it ties into him showing off 72 condemned 10,000 people who go against uh, the idea of condemning witches, the people who question his authority, he would hang even more so if he could. Now, the word level analysis you want to do here is firstly alliteration of T, 10 and 1,000, to show that Judge Danforth is much more focused on just stamping his power and authority and really bulldozing his ideas, even bulldozing those who question, who rationally say, hang on, is what's happening right? He will then also condemn them too. The other word level analysis you want to do are the verbs dared and rise. Again, this idea that his word is infallible, nobody should question him and there's no room for error on his part. Of course, this is now what leads to so many innocent people being killed and him playing a very important and critical role in killing all of these innocent people, much like how Senator McCarthy in 1950s America played a key role in many innocent people being accused of being communists in America and losing their jobs, losing their livelihoods, purely because he was just doing it for his own political agenda not so much that he cared whether there were actual communists in America. So that's it when it comes to understanding key quotations for the character of Judge Danforth.